So welcome everybody to the Integrate Yourself podcast. We're your hosts, Allison Plo and Maya Gottlieb. You can find me, Allison, at pureenergypdx.com and you can find Maya at mayagottlieb.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are having a topic show today. We're going to be talking about immunity. We're breaking it down to two types of immunity. I know it's a little bit more complex than that, but this is the best way that we feel is easiest for people to understand, especially with all the crazy information that's out there. You have lots of supplements you have that people, you know, sell to you to say, oh yeah, this will get rid of your, your cold or teas and which are great things. No, don't get me wrong. But what we're going to talk about today is giving yourself that foundation that you really need to combat the, the colds, the viruses and those kinds of things so that you have what's called, we're going to talk about what's called our innate immunity, our natural immunity that just kicks in and keeps everything out without having to cause, you know, any inflammation or trauma to the body or any real, real disruption to the body. We're going to talk about how that works and how you can set yourself up to be able to just maybe not even be disturbed at all. If you, even if you're sitting on a bus with someone coughing next to you, or you, you've got you're around sick people, maybe you don't get sick because your innate immune system is really working well. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that works. So Maya, thank you for coming on and uh, thank you for doing this with me because this is going to be an interesting show today and we have, are having our one year anniversary and we're actually going to have a separate special show for that. But today I just wanted to say congratulations, Maya. This has been, this has been really fun and um, I can't wait to, like I said before, see where, where this takes us and where we go with it. It's, it's exciting. So thanks for yeah. taking this ride with me. Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, this, it's just been a great adventure so far. And I think, um, I'm excited about the next couple of years. I, I see it as, yeah. you know, and it's Valentine's day. So like a yeah. lot of, um, you know, just budding of new things coming up and the real appreciation and gratitude for just, you know, your, idea of the show, um, just kind of wanting to do something like this together. It's brought so many different avenues of um, connection for me in terms of meeting new people, asking them to be on the podcast, um, you know, us finding our balance with this and other things that we do in our lives. So it really is magnificent for me to feel that this gratitude is just on a day that is deemed as a day of love and, and maybe the history books say it's a little bit, you know, uh, got some bad meetings, but I, I always love Valentine's day in terms of just how it reminds me to stay connected to people I love and, 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 and build on those relationships I've had for so long. So I am very excited. Let's, uh, let's talk about innate. Let's dig uh, in. Yeah. Innate versus adaptive or both, you know, in terms yeah. of how they work together. Yeah. So this is something that I've been really into lately. Um, and I was just on another show and we talked about vaccines. Now I don't want to get into the controversy of vaccines. Let me just say that because I know everybody has their own, uh, comfort with that and, and the way they feel about it. And I totally respect that. I'll share my own experience with vaccines at, probably on another, at another time. I did share my experience with vaccines, uh, in the show. Uh, I was on the learn true health podcast and that's not out yet, but it will be at some point in the future. But I did have a personal experience with it. So that got me to actually dig a little deeper into it and figure out why that happened and why I had that experience with it. And so, you know, to make a long story short, my child had a really bad reaction to one of the vaccines. So that, you know, got me curious as to why that would happen to somebody, what, what would cause that. And so what I found, what I later found out was that it is about our innate immune system. So if the innate immune system, which is our natural or natural barrier that needs to uh, be really, really built up and strong first um, is not great, then you're going to have problems with something like a vaccine, which is more of a, uh, it goes, it has an approach of like a more adaptive immunity approach. So meaning it's going to cause trauma and injury to the body because it does have heavy metals in it. And that's the whole purpose of those being in the vaccine. So when that happens, it causes trauma to the cells. And then the cells actually start to function differently 
from there on out. So it's really interesting. I kept, I kept looking into this and getting more and more interested in it for that reason, because it, it's sounding like that that can eventually turn the cells into oxidite and they're not uh, functioning or, or breathing properly. So then it creates this responsive inflammation, a chronic inflammation, which I think can lead to autoimmune disease is what it sounds like and other chronic diseases and Alzheimer's. And that was, uh, that was kind of mind blowing. I was like, wow. So it all starts with actually really proper nutrition and good sanitation. Some scientific studies in the past that have proven, and I think that continue to prove that sanitation and nutrition can be actually more effective than vaccines to some extent. So, but you know, for those people, I guess that aren't going to, aren't going to really stick, stick with good nutrition or actually find out what they need to do with that. Um, maybe vaccines are better for those people. I don't, I don't know. It's for that end of, that what we're trying to do is help everybody by educating, but also then you can make that informed decision and become your own authority on that aspect of it. Yeah. I mean, you have a great story and we'll definitely um, want to look out for your um, interview. Um, I think one of the differences between innate and adaptive is cells in the mitochondria have to be working in an optimal way. And we kind of forget what our environment can affect ourselves. So, you know, it starts even when you're a cell and your mom and your mom's exposing herself to certain things based on maybe low energy. Um, maybe she's a little um, hyperthyroid and she's got some things going on, stress, and that it changes you know, how your cells grow. And so then when you are born, you come out with a, a certain onset of abilities. And when then I think when you take the adaptive side of it, we've got to take into our environment, how you grow within your environment and kind of remember that epigenetics is really understanding that your, your DNA is getting affected by the, how well your cells are working. And um, mainly what I, I love about like Ray Pete's stuff is he talks about the sterile gut and the science based on keeping a gut healthy. And so kind of maybe want to talk a little bit about how we want to do that to help strengthen our innate and help our adaptive. Definitely. That's a, that's a big part of it. So cleaning the gut, getting rid of endotoxins or clearing them out on a regular basis is the best way to reserve that energy also for things that are external that you need to, to fight off. The point of the, the gene actually being affected by the cell's function, right? So mm -hmm. your, your cellular respiration, your cellular function, which may, maybe some people really don't understand what that means, right? But, right. It's, but it's, you know, I think what is taught or has been taught for a long time is that genes dictate basically what kind of how your body's going to respond or what kind of diseases you're going to get down the road. But what we're finding out is actually it's the other way around. Your cells are going to dictate what your genes do, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because the stress that the cells are going through is influencing how the body's functioning. So whether or not you go into a fatty acid oxidation, whether you do, um, you eat carbs, you don't eat carbs, whatever you're influencing your cells ability to create ATP, CO2, the um, functions between the vitamin A's, E, K, and D, the, you know, the solubles that you need for, the, you know, the function of the cell itself is going to create the stress. And so that stress is then going to tell your body, okay, we only have this much this much energy and we're just going to work around because we need you to survive. And one of the issues that comes with that is then you become symptomatic. So um, you can start to have similarities like your mother had this pattern or your father had this pattern. And so you start to see it in your body, but it's not necessarily like you're locked into your DNA of your parents. It is how you have been influenced when you grew up. 
So your environmental toxins, the way you ate your dietary de deficiencies, the way that you breathe, depleted oxidation mechanisms, those things lead to the disease process, which means that if you started to change some element of those, then you would create an opening for your body to maybe change a little. So that's why some people may have cancer and, and live through it and other people don't. But the problem is, is once we've been diagnosed with something, people get into this pathology of this is my condition and this is how I am. And I'm predisposed <laughs> right. to being that way. And through different eating habits, through different ways of changing, you can change it. You may never completely not have something, you know, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell someone who's got like a mess or something that you could reverse that. That'd be amazing uh, yeah. if it could totally happen. But that's because the cells had degenerated itself like the nerve endings and stuff because of the MS there are things that have already gotten to a point where you can't um, change it but you could probably slow it down so that you don't have all the deficiencies as you get older or die young yeah I, I thought that was interesting too and I kind of thought the same thing as well for a while and then I heard Ray Pete talking and he did mention that you could it sounded like you could regenerate that kind of uh, that situation in someone <clears throat> by actually regenerating the thyroid, getting that going and, and getting all of your youth steroid hormones back. And I mean, maybe not completely, but it could make it a lot better. I think, I don't know if he was intending to sound that, that you could cure it or anything, but it sounds like, I mean, to some extent, all of those things have a, a lot in common and it's a, it's a general lack of energy. Like the, the body just kind of runs out of fuel to regenerate, you know, in some, in some form or another. And, in that particular thing, it, it just has to, a lot to, more to do with the, with the nerves. And again, I don't know how well the nerves can regenerate after they've been damaged. Yeah. Two things that uh, was um, like, I mentioned the sterile gut, like a lot of people start getting all fascist about it and want to become like, you know, this clean freak of the gut. And it's yeah. not, it's not that it's just that studies have shown that rats have been in, not influenced by um, uh, certain toxins or they've, you know, had a healthy diet or they've had um, less fat in their diet based on what fats ha contain more toxins in them. There is a showing of the science that says that the sterile gut is where you get your health. It's not allowing your body to have to sluggishly go through the endotoxins and the liver's functioning well. Things live little bit easier. So one of the things about the regenerating of the nerves is that neuro neurology is starting to show neuroplasticity as yeah. the as the key to helping um, athletes, helping them find ways to hone their skills, find injury repair a little bit easier because of the pain that they experience. These things are all showing how neurology is increasing the influence of our performance. And so the science based on the sheath and the myelin sheath being destroyed in MS um, really has to do with energy and how much energy you have to repair. So if I'm just surviving on a certain amount of calories, I'm never going to have enough to override the repair. You know, like I need yeah twice as much of that calorie intake at that time to kind of do the repair part and survive. So this is where we get into the conversations of, well, I, you know, I don't want to gain a lot of weight. We got to get past the fact that, you know, in healing, healing means that somewhere you may have to gain some weight to help carry yourself through the um, repair set stage. It's just not letting yourself go into the excessiveness of it. So right. But back to like the adaptive uh, immunity is we try to take, you know, vaccines or we try to take supplements and they do help, but then you got to kind of categorize it onto what stage are you in? Like, and in the way I say stage, I mean like, so if I take some herb supplements, I kind of know that herbs are helpful to the liver at the time that I'm taking them. They don't really take as much energy as, say, as a pharmaceutical supplement or a supplement because 
to break that down, my body has to break that substance that is a foreign substance made by a product that has been basically simulated to natural products. And so if I take an herb, it's going to, it's like taking a homeopathics or something like that. They're supposed to be like a seasoning to your food. Mm-hmm. They pull that. Whereas if you inject yourself with a vaccine, what you talked about was the uh, metals or how they um, produce them. And you may be giving yourself some kind of um, small dose of pathogen so that your body adapts to it. That's the basis of what vaccines were. So like if I didn't want to get something, I was supposed to get this vaccine and it would get my body used to building up the immunity to it so that when I was exposed to it, that I wouldn't be affected. Mm-hmm. But some of these things are a guessing game, like the flu shot, right? Like if right. I get the flu, they have to guess which flu. Well, and usually right. they're very behind with it. It's never like anything that's current, right? I mean, it's... Right. So we're, we're play, like throwing darts, right? Yeah. It's, but people have, you know, weak immune systems and based on how they've been influenced, like I talked earlier, the Nate, you know, some people are uh, predispositioned because of they have what they believe is normal, like body aches and pains, or they have low energy and that's just how they used to being They're stressed. That's how they're used to being stressed and they just push through it. And one of the things is, is when you get sick, it really shows up how quickly your body was, you know, a lot of people have got hit by this past, um, uh, flu season and it knocked them to the ground. And, um, I had my own bouts of it, but I also recognized the stress around me that I was going through these stressors that you go through, you can get through them some, but some stress, which transitioning of a a mother-in-law into a um, senior living is quite bigger than I had ever assumed. And so you get kind of wiped out already from stuff like that, emotionally, physically, you know, moving things and stuff. So when you get hit by something that's flu or something, some parts of you have to kind of realize like there's just not enough energy to go around. You just right. you can't be prepared. <laughs> well, yeah. And you have to, you have to put energy back in too. Like I, I think probably one of the best things you can do, even though you might not feel like really taking in food, you once you start feeling like your immunity is getting low, you should start eating some food. Just really get some good food into you. Like, um, take yeah. some oranges, you know. Yeah, I recommend highly the Sumo uh, oranges right now. They come out in February. They're the amazing seedless. Probably mm. going to regret telling people about this. <laughs> They're going to get sold out. No more of them, but um, just you know, easy to digest. If you have any problems with the skins, you know, just eat the, um, the pulp. And then, you know, um, that's what I do just to get kind of some energy because the fructose is important. Uh, the vitamin C is incredibly important for yeah. your system, getting sunlight, getting outdoors. If you don't have that, get a vitamin D, I think it's called a Sparta S P E R T I lamp. They're expensive, but they're incredible. Definitely. You could take some supplement D, but I would definitely not ingest it as much as I would maybe put it on my skin because of irritants to um, the gut. And I think uh, one of the things I would recommend is checking out a website called toxinless.com. The guy's name is Dan Wick. Um, he, uh, he has done a lot of research on products that have fillers and has um, come up with a website to help people find really good sources of um, supplementation while going through this cold season. One thing I've been thinking about too is all the things we put on our skin as well. So our skin is kind of our first line of defense for our immunity in a, in a, a lot of ways. So washing hands, washing your face because you're touching your face. I'm in a gym all day long. So I'm touching equipment that a million people have touched and, you know, sweated on and, you know, everybody, <laughs> if you really think about it, it's kind of gross, but I try not to. So I just wash my hands after every client or as frequently as I possibly can. And that's one, that's one thing, right? That's easy. Anybody can do it. It's super easy. So 
But the they other thing is, don't trust those hand uh, sanitizers. They're oh god, no. Yeah, that's not that's not enough. Unless you're like in the woods, do it use the porta potty or something. That's the only re- that's the only time I'll actually even think about doing that. But um, which is uh, you know around in Oregon, you find a lot of those. So that's <laughs> um. So anyway, back to what I was saying though with the skin. Like if you're also putting a lot of toxic stuff on your skin, yeah. then that can affect your innate immunity, right? Mm-hmm. So that can affect the way your liver functions, but it can also affect, um, especially if there's a lot of estrogen in the products or it actually not estrogen so much, but if it produces estrogen in your body, if it's an estrogen product, like we've called in the past, um, like the skincare products, the makeup, they have a lot of chemicals in them that would induce a, a response of the body producing more estrogen, like because it's a stress hormone. So it would you know, it, you know, putting chemicals on your body is going to create, create stress. I think so, you're talking about the par- parabens. And yes, the definitely. Yeah, the- All of those kind of things. Uh, there's tons of them and colors and, and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. So those are foreign. Those are foreign. Those are going to cause trauma to the body. Just, just you know, similar to if you're injecting something in your body, like we were talking about with the vaccines, like the, the heavy metals. And so the heavy metals, the polyunsaturated fats, the stuff we put on our skin uh, that has tons of chemicals in it. Those are just a few, but those are things that um, most people can control. And so I would just start there, you know, uh, with those things. But again, your skin, you know, keeping it clean, not putting, I mean, I think all I put on my skin is coconut oil really and yeah. vitamin D and that's about it. And sometimes, um, sometimes the ProGest E is, I use that on my skin as well. And that's really helpful. There are some things that we'll be um, putting out, like some skincare product uh, uh, made up things that I, I kind of have a, a little uh, regimen I do with coconut oil, with niacinamide, and some things that would kind of help skin inter- or progesterone um, because there are certain things that I'm working on. So like I have lipofuscin, which is the brown spotting on my, um, cheekbones and I noticed them coming out a little bit more. So, you know, niacinamide is your B3 and it helps with your, uh, skin and in helps with, um, releasing the iron that's in the lipofuscin to remove itself. And, and Ray Pete talked about this a while back and I've seen a lot of change just by doing that. And so we'll, we'll bring you a series of homemade self-care. One of the posts of Instagram, I put a homemade DIY um, toothpaste. So there's things that you, we commonly do want to see what we need, but yeah, learning how to not overload our systems with skin products and stuff like that. That's yeah. Important. And, and I kind of, I mean, this is a personal thing. I don't know for me, it's, that's kind of easy, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really, I'm not I've never really worn a lot of makeup anyway, so that that hasn't been a problem. I'm not really attached to it, but I know some women are. Mm. So if you are attached to makeup, I suppose you could get something a little less toxic uh, as far as makeup goes. I don't know what those brands are because mm-hmm. I don't, like I said, I don't use makeup, but you could do some some research and find out and, and see, you know, what the more natural, organic um, – kind of, I guess, maybe more mineral kind of content uh, makeup you could find, but. I always like less is more. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I always say, don't, you know, why, you know, set expectations high if you, (laughs) I mean, I, I don't, I, you know, just have, have your own natural look and, but I actually look worse with makeup on. So that's why I don't wear it. If I did, I probably would wear it. If I looked better, I probably would wear it, but I don't. Yeah. But anytime anybody wears makeup in a gym, there's a problem. I know. I'm sorry. guys. Yeah. That's to me. Comfortable. Yeah. I was sweating. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe it's the, the fact that we both work in gyms and we're so used to it, but it's, you know, it, it complicates a lot of stuff. Sweat yeah. coming out, you know, just too much. Too so. much to think about. That's the, yeah, that's something I don't really, an- another thing on my list I don't need, but. <laughs> which is but, also mental stress, which is also part of how the cells work. So. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point because um, we talked a little bit about this on our last podcast. Anna was talking about self-love and how it's a, you know, it's a term that's been, th- that's thrown around a lot, but again, you can think about that and how 
you see yourself, you know, do you, do you have to have that? Do you have to, what do you attach to, to feel good about yourself? I mean, there's nothing wrong with feeling attached to some things, you know, like I'm attached to my hair. I don't really want to shave my hair off. I feel like I, I really like my hair. So that's one thing I'm for sure attached to, but you know, there's other things that we might not need, like that would be harmful for the body. So those are things to consider. And I, I think makeup, I consider that one of those things, nail polish, those kinds of things. But I know a lot of women love that. So, you know, again, you know, just try to find the most non-toxic version of that that you can. Yeah. I mean, we also know that our listeners are in different fields of profession and sometimes you have to, you know, play a different part and you can't be as... That's true. Um, uh, uh, you know, able to be as maybe natural as you want because you got a couple of requirements. But I mean, I think a lot of people have kind of lightened the load. There, I know a lot of people don't do uh, heavy makeup as much as I, we we grew up, and you know, yeah. But um, what what we're really kind of getting into is that think about the stressors that you have to kind of deal with and see what you can eliminate to help reduce the stresses so that you're let's go back to the, the main thing. Yeah. Like, the mitochondrial <laughs> cell is needing a break from yeah. you know, either suffocation from this toxins from through your skin, um, you know, checking in and seeing if your um, vitamin A is doing well, uh, vitamin E, vitamin DK, those soluble fats are vital to how the, cell, the cells function. And if you have like skin acne or any of that, uh, working with your gut. So, eating a uh, carrot salad, maybe finding out what's going on with your thyroid if you need to see if that's something that's important to you. Um, you know, kind of find out what's going on with the energy of your body. How are you balancing your food? How do you feel after meals? You talked about this with someone also about how much energy in and energy out is going to affect your skin. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So she had a question about acne, about adult acne. And she was talking about wanting to go to na a naturopath, which is fine, you know, to, to try to solve the problem and figure it out. But really, it doesn't have to be that complicated. And that's what we talked to her about that, uh, you know, you could just use, it could just mean that you're missing nutrients and you're not, ha your body is not getting the energy that needs to regenerate. And that's usually what acne is. So I, I see that a lot with people who are, have a high metabol or a potential for high metabolism, possibly. Maybe they're not giving their, their, their body enough energy. Like their body requires a lot of energy, a lot of food, but they're actually undernourishing. To, to some extent. And these are people who generally stay pretty thin all the time. They don't really have to worry about their weight, but they do have that, those other issues where they have a little bit of maybe there's some uh, hypothyroid issues going on there, right? I also would say, I mean, we talk about gut function really a lot, but what we're really also help, trying to convey is that for, especially for women, in men who have high estrogen, when you have a, a lot of endotoxins, you're you're not getting all the nutrients in you. It's then right. shared out. So like, that's a good point. Even yeah. if you do carrot salad, you could do a bamboo shoots. You can do um, white butter mu mushrooms, well cooked. Um, well, all these things help reduce the endotoxins, which endotoxins are basically what are produced from the bacteria. And what happens is they consume what you consume. And if you have a lot of that in your gut, you're creating a um, division of, of source of food, fuel for you, fuel for your endotoxins. And so... Um, so they're feeding off that, uh, what you're not able to absorb, basically, is what you're saying. Right, because yeah. they feed themselves, you end up, you know, maybe half of what you've nutritionally wise can't get. So some people can sleep better at night, you know, when they've had bamboo shoots in the day, um, they give themselves an ability to clear out the, the gut yeah. or, or you can do activated charcoal. But what you're looking for is to try to help, you know, we talked about the sterilize the gut a little so that you're basically allowing yourself the ability to absorb food, right? right. So, so the first step would be to clean the gut with the carrot. You have your options of carrot, uh, raw carrot salad, charcoal, or um, bamboo shoots and um, mushrooms. Mushrooms, yeah. So, 
Some people don't do so good on the, like, just eating it. Yeah. Some people need the oil and the vinegar with the carrot salad. And that stimulates digestion, right? Yeah. And the length length cutting the uh, carrot into a length position, lengthwise, Mm -hmm. is actually like strands of fiber. It really pulls through the gut and helps. So then you got, you know, the endotoxins reducing, then the estrogen is, is, is being pulled through the gut too. So if you think about estrogen and how estrogen affects the cells and keeps the calcium in the cells and keeps you from not um, having enough magnesium, these, these things start to help the cells, you know, when you start to pull this stuff out, the endotoxins, the estrogen gets processed, then the cells can regenerate a little easier. You know, it's like having right. a clog filter. You yeah, want to yeah. filter everything out so that it helps the cells do what they're naturally supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, then, you know, having vitamin C, having your fresh fruits, these are easy digestible things for the cells to create the carbon dioxide through the cells mechanisms and they're not starving and they're not shutting down all these things keep your innate immunity up high because it's like filling the tank so it sounds like we're saying clean the gut first make sure that you get it clear so that you're even hungry enough to take in the nutrients as well because i've noticed when i've uh, done the carrot pretty consistently and gotten, you know, my gut starts feeling better and then I get hungrier and I want more food. Right. So that's the first step. And then the second step I would say be put in the nutrients that you, you need for regenerating those areas. Like for example, skin, like we we're just talking about vitamin A, thyroid, you know, foods that have thyroid in them, not just thyroid supplement. So that would be like, well, milk has been like for me that I've, that's been my thyroid supplement this winter. You can do um, liver once a week. And a shellfish, most shellfish has selenium and zinc and anything else that you need there for your immunity. Fresh fruits if you can, especially I know right. it's really hard. They have a lot of good uh, B vitamins. Yeah, you also want to make sure you're getting that uh, carbon dioxide exchange. So breathing techniques, things that kind of help uh, release the stress and create the, the CO2. That's uh, a good point. Nose breathing. Because if you think about um, mouth breathing as opposed to nose breathing, uh, you're taking in all that stuff through your mouth. You know, you're not, you know, you've got filters in your nose. That's why we have hair in our nose. So we we're filtering out all the, the stuff in the air, you know, the pathogens. And then if you're taking it in through your mouth, it just goes straight everything in not non-filtered. So well, that's some- another point. So yeah, it, it all relates back to immunity. And if you can also cut out your polyunsaturated fats, because those tend to really actually break down your innate immunity um, and make it weaker. And then you, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, um, definitely. I mean, we, we always reiterate the, the liver is your greatest function in your body because it does so much um, to help you know, create thyroid, it do, it does everything. And one of the things is, is that if you look at the polyunsaturated fats, the long chains are so hard on the liver to break down that constantly having to break those down locks up the liver and then the liver doesn't function as well. So, uh, unsaturated fats, corn oils, the, um, vegetable oils, these things, um, inhibit the ox, you know, cause they're oxidizing already so when they go into the body, they're already creating uh, limitations. Then that's where the vitamin A gets lost too. The lower vitamin A, you can't, your acne comes up as your body has the uh, low A, it doesn't, the carotene production starts to build up and then you have these acne spots, right? And so these are just signs of stress that are showing up on your skin. Hey everybody. Thrive Market has been my most favorite online store for about two years now. And I'll tell you guys why. It's because they sell the best and the highest quality organic and health products at wholesale prices. So you get about 25 to 50% off and they ship it straight to your door. So it's super easy and you can get all the products that we actually recommend on this show as well as uh, many products that you'd probably find at something like Whole Foods and it'd probably be marked up about 50%, which gets expensive every week. So that's one of the reasons I really love Thrive Market. 
Members get everyday wholesale pricing at 25 to 50% off the best healthy and organic premium products for just $60 a year. So if you put that into perspective, you can make your membership back in savings within the first two orders, which is kind of amazing. And even better, for every paid membership, Thrive Market donates a membership to a low-income fam family, veteran, or teacher. So together, we're all making a healthy living affordable for everyone, and we're helping the community. And that's one of the things I really also love about Thrive Market. And that's a company I am so honored to support. And if you support Thrive Market that way, you can also support our podcast. And uh, by just joining, even for the trial membership or ordering a product off Thrive Market, you send a little bit of money back to us. And that supports our production costs and all the time that we put into this podcast for you guys. So thank you guys so much. If you want to join um, or tr do a trial for Thrive Market, go ahead and follow the link, click on the link, and then it'll take you to pureenergypdx.com and you can find the Thrive Market banner, click there, and then it'll take you straight over there through our affiliate link. We appreciate it so much. Thank you. And now back to the show. I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to like give everybody a reference of where the, um, the oxidative cell metabolism being responsible for the innate immunity came from some of the research of William F. Uh, Koch. It's K-O-C-H. I and mean, I got his name from Ray Pete uh, in his research. Basically, his, his, it was very interesting. I, I have to say, if you are interested in this kind of stuff and you really are a, like a science geek like us and nutritional science geeks, then check out his web his website and his research and it talks about you know how it's related to how injured cells can actually lose their ability to resist toxins and bacteria and viruses which you know your cells are getting injured when you put stuff on your skin when you put um when you put stuff in your body like a heavy metal or something like that so anytime you're injured or there's trauma this changes the function of the cell. And I thought that was really interesting. And it came from, from William. He, he discovered that it was the energy of the cells that made immunity work. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So and he I actually, just remember uh, that. that's pretty simple, right? Yeah. I mean, he actually has a, a lot of years of research in, yeah. uh, in especially ha having to deal with the medical and pharmaceutical industry that intentionally didn't allow a lot of his research to come out and, you know, how he had to deal with this whole dogma of the uh, biology, what I think they call it the reductionism. And everything is to cut things out, this pathogen or that, kill this, with, that's where the cancer stuff comes from. Um, if you find something, cut it out or get rid of it. And, and so his, um, his, his greatest attribute was that he actually um, has studies that showed, you know, how the immune system worked and how it didn't do what the system of the medical system has been showing us. So yeah. definitely a, a renegade in, in his, his theories and stuff, but absolutely. I, I agree. And I think it also teaches us that there are theories that are medical establishments or, you know, the mainstream approaches are based on certain theories and they may or may not be right, <laughs> you know? So you have to kind of decide what, what feels truthful for you. But uh, for me, that, that makes, you know, William Koch's theories are fascinating and they make so much more sense if you look at how the body works and how it, it it's supposed to work. It, it just makes sense that the immunity would, would actually act that way would, would respond that way yeah, you got out of the way of the body that you would the yeah body would wow would work. <laughs> if we'd stop messing it's like, around <laughs> it's an intelligent life force it, right? it wants to repair itself we just get in its way yeah, yeah. that would, that would yeah, be do. amazing cut things out so <laughs> anyway <laughs> we won't go down that road um but i just that's really cool yeah <laughs> So it, why, and it, you know, I just, I'll say, I'll reiterate like why I bring that up because it really is, I think it's really important for us to know the history and know the history of science, know the history of the medical profession, to know why, you know, science, there's certain beliefs and dogmas in science that they're, that they just build on and then they continue to build on and then they sell drugs on this, on this science. And, and so 
you just have to remember there is, um, you know, it's the same thing. Like after a while people realize, yeah, saturated fat doesn't cause heart attacks. That's dumb. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every, everybody's like that. Yeah, no, duh. You know? But before that, people were like, yeah, and people actually do still think that, but there's a lot more people on board with the realization that, hey, that's not actually what happens. We know this now. But for a long time, there was that dogma that came with that and, and a lot of drugs followed. So again, we just want to think about like where things come from and that's what we're helping you guys with uh, on here. I love the science stories and the science history. If you take history and you take where the money goes, you'll find how things got kind of wackadoodled. Um, That's true. And, yeah. and, and, and you, the information that we're, we're hoping to help spread is the self-awareness. You know, you can be your own researcher. You, you are your own physician. Decide for yourself because a lot of times when we get hurt or we get older, well, we all get older, but when we get to a point of fear of our health, we then forget to stay in our own power and we give right. our power away by allowing people to induce fear and say, you know, you need to follow the, the masses and, you know, not do your own thing. And this is a problem because this is where even now, and I'm seated in my life right now, is people believe that no one wants to help them. You know, they're too old or they're, um, they got to stay with some doctor that the doctor is going to say to them, you know, oh, well, because this other doctor found you had an a issue, we need to keep you on this drug, but we're going to try to prevent you from having like we had a stroke or something. So they give you some drug like Warfin or you know, Coumadin, which is basically rat poisoning. And then they put you oh, on these drugs for so long, you know, and, and even there's a great one where uh, I think it's the endocrinology interview with uh, Ray Pete and, and herb doctors where he talks about how people in diabetes too for adults is actually uh, more of a, a, a made up kind of disease based on the fact that people are not having problems with insulin production, it's a fact that their mechanism to their blood sugar is being inhibited. And so this whole idea of inducing insulin for years on people has been dogmatically been created. And, and it's yeah. just fascinating to see um, in real life how I'm, I'm seeing in my own family about having to get checkups on, er, do daily things that, that are not necessary. And well, I say not necessary, but some people believe it's very necessary. You know, you're 10 yeah. years in and you needed a colonoscopy or, or it's like, kind of like going to the dentist, right? They always say, well, we have to take x-rays. Oh, did you take x-rays six months ago? Oh, well, you know, you need to have checkups every this and that. And the body's not, you know, needing to be checked in all the time. It's like, if I, if I yeah. listened to everyone, I'd be at the doctor all the time. And that's pretty much where it happens when you get older. Your whole life is going from one doctor to the next, and that's not living. No. That's bouncing back and forth between people's opinions because they're all practitioners too. They're all trying to figure it out based on what they believe and what they've been taught. And the, the issue comes around about how you're going to live your life. And can you feel secure as you get older in your age in knowing that, hey, I'm, my body works well. I'm very aware of what it needs. Yes, don't take the, you know, baby, you know, throw the baby out of the bathwater, just really see that you're open to going to a doctor when you need to go to the doctor. You don't need right. a reminder every day to tell you that you need something checked. I kind of feel like a lot of the tests are very destructive to the body. I mean, it's a lot of radiation that you get yourself exposed to. Number one, um, we can go down this road, but you know, I, you know, that's the thing though. That's the unfortunate thing is that now doctors are kind of their back is up against the wall because now really the only way they can make money, any money or much or a living, I should say, is to have all these tests and have people continually come in and do tests, diagnosis tests. And, and that's, unfortunately, that's how they make their money now. <laughs> Well, it's also because the insurance companies are forced. Well, that's a big part of it. And kind of, I wish that we could somehow, because I really think that if doctors could get back to their practice, get back to the practice of, um, of, of practicing medicine, 
then they could, um, you know, we could cut out the middleman, which is the health insurance companies and just have it directly from the person to the doctor. And I guarantee you the prices would go down, you know, but right now the prices are so high because you've had that middleman and it's such a mess, but yeah, I mean, I want to add, I mean, I'm not saying all doctors are bad. All I'm asking is, Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. Create the idea that your body can actually heal thyself. Oh yeah. I think the, that trust needs to be built again in people. We've yeah, lost you, that. you know, you're in your own authority. Some people do need these things. Um, we're just trying to help give preventative ways of not always being dependent on it. But when you do have a severity and you need to have something done, we also want to provide information of how to ease the stress that you may have when you have a root canal or having to have x-rays. What yeah. can you do to repair things that you may have to go through because you need, do need them? Yeah. Um, so mainly just to know that, you know, while this craziness is going on, you can re- repair yourself and reduce these you know, influences. Yeah. Even for surgery too. Like you should prepare yourself for surgery, uh, any kind of surgery, as well as if you've got to take a vaccine. Some people have to do it because of like what you mentioned um, a while back, uh, their job requires it or they have to travel, you know? So yeah. there is, and then, and that's, there's no judgment there, you know? Um, and then some people do want to get vaccines and that's totally fine. Just make sure that your innate immunity is working properly, you know, like give it the fuel that it needs. And that's all we're really saying. I just wanted to also bring up, um, going back to the real quick, the innate immune system. So when there's a malfunction in the innate immune system, we, so for example, when, it, when there's just very little bit of damage and there's not enough to really see any noticeable inflammation, that means like your innate system is working properly. Um, you should never really, you're in, in, within the innate immune system, you should never really reach the point or the stage of inflammation. So that's like for a healthy body. Like we should never really, I mean, inflammation is a natural part of life, but when you're talking about the immune system, you're not supposed to constantly be inflaming the immune system. And so that was the point that was made. I thought was pretty interesting, but we're yet we're doing that, you know, through the adaptive immune system theory. Even yeah. like the ideas of um, cleanses and yes. detoxes. Yeah, exactly. That's All it's these stress. supplements too that can stress the body out as well. That's why. Or restricted dieting. Yeah. Oh God. The ketosis is a big one right now. And that's the most stressful diet that I, that I can think of that's going on right now, honestly. But what I really thought was interesting was uh, the thing about pregnenolone, how it, it acts as it turns off the immune cells that are activated when you get an inflammatory response, right? So those, the cells that get inflamed when your immune system gets turned on. So the way the innate immune system works is um, they send immune cells, so rapid repair cells, so they can start repairing immediately. And then pregnenolone turns off the inflammatory response, which I thought was like, wow, that's really cool. Pregnenolone is the grandmother. So basically she starts the whole cascade of the cholesterol. And then the cholesterol, I mean, that's where you get the vitamin A, vitamin D, all your vitamin solubles. Yeah. Uh, And then from what I understand, you are reducing the cortisol driven aspect, right? So like, yeah, I guess what I was trying to say is that pregnenolone um, turns off that stress response, the inflammation response, right? And when your your immune system gets triggered and, and then it allows the repair cells to come in and start repairing immediately. Whereas when you have an adaptive immune response, you immediately create inflammation and then the repair cells never get to repair because they don't have the energy to do it, right? So, um, well, that's actually what happens if someone has low energy, I should say. I should add that in too. So, um, and this is the way I understand it. It's very simple. This is very simplified like explanation, but. Yeah, there's um, like a whole bunch of other steps in between, but. but There's a lot of other steps, but I'm just trying to get people to understand kind of where we're coming from here. But basically what the pregnenolone allows it, it, the cells to do is to stabilize and stop the inflammation so and start repairing immediately, which is really huge, right? Yes, because it's, it's how you get progesterone. It's how you get all your other use steroids. And those are the ones that keep the inflammation down because 
they're keeping estrogen and levels down of your um, adrenaline and uh, cortisol effects. So, and it, you know, inflammation builds that keeps it down. And so what happens between there and then is that you are basically allowing yourselves to do their job. Absolutely. And then, so that's why it's important to have those recovery hormones that we talk about and all the food that we talk about eating helps your body produce those. And so if you have the, you can't really produce them without enough, uh, enough energy and nutrients. And so number one, absorbing it, like we talked about earlier, then number two, even having that available. So you're, you're, you're taking in enough that you're not using more than you're taking in basically. So you are bringing enough energy into the body and you're able to absorb it. Right. Yeah. So just trying to keep it simple, but um, I hope that helped everybody understand the difference between the innate immune system, the adaptive immune system. Did you have anything else you wanted to add to that Maya before we take off? Um, no, I think we did fairly well. Well, maybe we can talk about how certain diets can be stressful on the body and the immune system at a later maybe next month or something that might be a good, let's just wait to hear what people say. And yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So if you guys, um, if you have any questions about this episode or any other episodes for that matter, you can always go to our Facebook group. It's the integrate yourself podcast community. And that's a great way to access us and ask us questions. But we also like to try to have other people in the group answer the question as well. So, you know, it's not just us answering people's questions. We also have um, other people in the group that are really qualified to answer questions as well. So if you do have a really hard question, definitely uh, present it there and we may even talk about it in the show. Also, we're coming up, we're, we're putting together a digestive course, Digestion for Better Hormonal Balance, because we talk about this constantly and we want to help people really integrate this into their life and, and be able to use it in a practical way. Because as, as interesting as the science and the physiology is to us, we want to help people actually really be able to eat the right foods, know what nutrition they need at certain times, and, and get to know their own body much better too. So... We're going to help you guys out with that. So we're putting it together. We'll let you know it's probably going to come out this spring. So um, we, most likely we're going to have a webinar before that. And we're working on that. You can see we're on Zoom. We're using it. We're, we're trying it out. And we'll most likely have the webinar on Zoom. And we'll let you guys know when that comes out. The best way to stay in touch with this is to get on our newsletter. And you can download your six steps to better digestion at pureenergypdx.com. And of course, you can check Maya out at mayagottlib.com. You can find our podcast on both of our websites as well as our YouTube channels. And we have so much great information on all of those. I think I, I don't think I left anything out other than you if you want to support our podcast, head over to our affiliate link, Thrive Market, which has like amazing organic products for 25 to 50% off retail prices, which I mean, I get coconut oil from there all the time. I tell you guys that. And as well as, you know, Four Sigmatic, I've been using their mushroom mixes lately. It's been pretty great. I don't know if you've tried those Maya, but not yet, but I am. You got to try them. They're so, they have a hot cacao with reishi mushroom in it. It's like mm. it, I've been mixing it in my milk and just loving it. So um, you can get that either on Thrive Market or you can get it through a straight up through Four Sigmatic. And all you have to do is enter the code integrate yourself and you can get 10% off on your order at Four Sigmatic. So thank you guys so much for watching and, and listening today. We appreciate you guys. Uh, definitely subscribe. And if you want to uh, support our podcast by giving us a review, we'd love it. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to start giving people shout outs as they give us more reviews. We've been getting a lot of them. So thank you guys uh, over head over to iTunes or Stitcher. And, and I think that's about it. So well, so we have a lot of stuff coming up. You guys stay tuned and um, yeah, and, and other guests coming back uh, from last year, some special guests, and we'll tell you guys about that soon. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. All awesome. right. Thank you, Maya. I'll talk All to right. you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.